right, it's really weird being on this side of the couch. Uh, Kevin Hawk is still not with us, but uh, we are gonna trek on, and we don't have the uh, we don't have the our special guest anymore. No, we uh, kicked him out. Yeah, he uh, he brought a bomb on set. Yeah, he kept touching the set. Uh, yeah, Jeff Hardy still can't sit up because yeah, it's it it's been chaos. But we're gonna trek on, and we're gonna start this segment. We call the midweek wrap up, yeah. and we're gonna start the midweek wrap up like we always do. We're gonna start with main event. We had three matches, but all three matches were really good. Yeah, uh, we opened up with the Lucha Dragons versus the Masters. This was fucking awesome. This is something we talked about last week yeah. about how this is going to happen, and it fucking happened on yep. main event. It's already happened, and. I think the highlight of the entire match, the the match itself was amazing. The highlight was the the battle between Kalisto yeah. and Cesaro. Like Cesaro, Spider Man crawling all over him. <laughs> yeah, Kalisto's speed. He was just doing all kinds of weird flips. Yeah, it was around like Cesaro. Kalisto went for a head scissors, which Cesaro was gonna counter into like a fucking power slam, which Kalisto decided he was gonna counter into like a crucifix maybe. And so I was like, no, I'm going to power slam you. And then, yeah, and then it was like, I'm going to do another little flippy doo but no, I'm going to sidewalk slam. And it was just, yeah, it was chaos. I, th- I think Kalisto ended up winning and getting the head yeah. scissors. But, man, we just, we had so much action in this match. We had, uh, you know, Kalisto and Tyson Kidd. That was one of the things that I was really excited oh, yeah. to see. So I'm excited to see a one-on-one between those guys. Yeah. But the Masters would end up getting the win uh, when they end up doing the NXT kick and the uppercut yep. combo. So Masters, tag team champions, picking up the win over the Lucha Dragons. Uh, we moved on to another tag team match, which was redemption for the piece of shit 15-second yeah. Divas t- tag match that we got. On Raw, we had the Bellas taking on Paige and Emma. A lot more action in this one. Yeah. Uh, not a, still not a whole lot to write home about, though. No, I just feel like this was the, oh shit, the give Divas a chance thing is trending. Uh, hurry. The... Yeah. Well, and I, I, um, this was recorded Tuesday, which I yeah. think is when the give Divas a chance hashtag started. Yeah, trending. it was like I think it started Monday after Raw and then really caught fire Tuesday. So yeah, they're like. Shit, shit, what? Okay, um, what's, what's our other main event match? Fucking Heath Slater versus someone? Okay, fuck that. Fuck that <laughs> shit. We're not doing that one. Give the, give the Divas, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> Tops. Uh, but the, the Bellas would end up getting the win. This was a really weird end, because Paige and Emma were actually in control when Paige threw Nikki to the outside yeah. and started beating her up. And then Emma and Brie were both kind of like same level. Brie hits the yes factor on Emma, and we're waiting. Okay, here comes Paige. Yeah. Here comes Paige. Pa- 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 okay, they, they, they fucking lost. And then all of a sudden, Nikki gets back in the ring like nothing happened. Yeah. And Paige has like gone halfway around the ring, not selling anything. She's just wandering. Like, what the I think fuck she happened? She just couldn't figure out how to get back in the ring. <laughs> she. she all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I need, to, I need to get in. I don't. Oh fuck, we lost. I'm gonna walk over here, and pretend like I was doing something else. No, she was just like walking around the ring, like, where do I get up? Oh, I don't know how to. Is there a door? They don't have the stairs. It was just, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, but at least the match was longer than 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and then our main event, we had Stardust taking on Kofi Kingston. This was an awesome match. Yeah. Uh, both Kofi and Stardust are super quick, super agile, and they're able to play off of each other. Uh, Kofi had Big E and Xavier Woods in his corner. Uh, just a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Uh, there was a cool, like, they both kept trying to go for moves, and then, like, Kofi went for the Trouble in Paradise, and he, and Stardust ducked it, and then he ended up, like, getting caught with, like, a, with, like, a, uh, another kick, and it was just a, yeah. a lot of stuff, like I mean, a lot of back and forth, which this, is really cool. This is why I can't hate the New Day. Like, I'm not all super on board with them. Just because they haven't really done anything with the gimmick. 
It's kind of stagnant. But each one of these guys is able to put on a fucking awesome match. So to have Kofi in there with someone like Stardust, who is phenomenal, like, you have a recipe for success right there. See, and the only reason the gimmick hasn't gone anywhere is because it's, it got such a shitty reception from its, from its yeah. debut that no one gave it a fucking chance, and people just shit on it yeah. like, as soon as it came on the scene. What's wrong with being happy, people? Let's all be happy and watch some fucking wrestling. Stop booing people yeah. because you don't like the gimmick. If You can not like the gimmick, but appreciate what that person is doing in the yeah. ring. But, unfortunately, Kofi Kingston would not win this match. He'd get hit with a Crossroads DDT. Fuck. He sold the shit out of that Crossroads. Yeah. And this is why... Don't boo Kofi Kingston because he's a fucking workhorse, all right? Stop it. Just start us with, like, Crossroads, and he's, Kofi heard DDT, so he's just like, Crossroads, all right, DDT. Whoa, that was, all right, that was a thing. And then Biggie's, like, wiping sweat yeah. off of him, like, you're going to be okay, Kofi. Yeah, I, Biggie, I don't it, it works for Biggie, so he thinks it's going to work for I, Kofi, too. I guess. Anyway. Maybe he was trying to revive him. Like, it already had his sweat, so he was like, wake up. <laughs> like a sensu bean in yeah. Dragon Ball Z is like... Well, no, like... You, you know, get power from... You know, if you pour water on That's... Something. No, I get it. That's what he says. You will feel the power. <laughs> it's his sweat. Ah. When you get Biggie sweat on you, you get powerful. <laughs> All right. That's weird. It is. Uh, but that was the main event. We're going to move on to Lucha Underground. Uh, we opened up with a, a quick little... Uh, movie-esque kind yeah. of intro uh, with a car driving down the road and we uh, it's revealed through kind of an x-ray kind of looking thing that Black Lotus has been she got black bagged last yeah. week uh, and she is now locked in this trunk and she's being driven around uh, what I assume is Boyle Heights uh, so we'll have to wait till later in the show to find out what happened with her but we opened up with a rematch from a couple weeks ago Aerostar taking on Drago this was awesome and First off, Aerostar, one of the first things he does is this fucking dive where he throws Drago out of the ring, runs up, springboards on the inside of the second rope, jumps over the top rope to springboard off the outside of the yeah. second rope to do a flip to the... What are you yeah, doing? I just... I feel like sometimes wrestlers, especially really athletic wrestlers, just do stuff... Like, that has no practical reason. They're just like, look what I can do. <laughs> it's Well, me and Kevin Hawk always talk about someone like Austin Aries. Yeah. Austin Aries does these, like, weird little movements. Like, unnecessary movements. Right. That, that do not help him in any yeah. way, shape, or form. But he does them. Right. And it's, I don't know, fucking agile wrestlers can do whatever the fuck they want. Right. And Aerostar is a perfect example. Uh, this has a lot of back and forth, crazy action, a really intense match. Uh, Aerostar ends up beating Drago with a, a springboard just stiff splash. Yeah. N- no knees, no arms. Just like like kind of what Rey Mysterio ended right. up doing. Uh, just hits the splash real hard. Uh, pins Drago. Like hard enough uh, to bounce off of him. Yeah, legit. Bounces right off of his chest. They shake it. They shook hands before the match. They shake hands again. Yeah. Aerostar raises uh, Drago's hand. The Dario Cueto comes out and says, "You know, I can see that you have respect for each other. You have love for each other." Well, I'm so there's gonna be a wedding. No, no. Sorry, I was watching 2002. This is this is Aerostar and Drago. Yeah, I was not Billy and yeah. Chuck. I was um, watching 2002 wrestling the other day. So, <laughs> um, no, he uh, he says, "Well, you know, you guys enjoy spending time together, so I'm gonna have you guys." do more matches. You guys have both won a match apiece. The next person to win two more matches will be the winner of one of what I call a unique opportunity. The last time there was a unique opportunity was when we had the two 10-man matches that led to Aztec Warfare. Yeah. So now we have a best of five series between Aerostar and Drago, and the winner gets a unique opportunity uh, from Dario Cueto. So that should be interesting. Uh, then we get our number one contenders match. If Cage can beat Prince Puma, he gets a title shot against the champion. Uh, P- 
Puma tried. Yeah. Really, really hard. And for the most of the most of the beginning of the match, Cage was just dominant. Yeah. He was Cage. destroying Puma left and right. Yeah. Uh, Puma started to get some offense, started pulling off his high flying moves. That caused Cage to do his springboard moonsault. And it was just it was like a battle it was a battle at that point. There yeah. was just how many yeah. different finisher type moves could they hit? Uh, Cage hit like fucking like almost end of days like move. Yeah, he uh, he gets them almost set up like the gory special. Yeah, and then like grabs grabs the face underneath the arm and then does it, it's it's like a it's a gory special sister Abigail yeah. kind of thing. Fucking that that was it's a gory sister. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> it's a sister special. <laughs> that sounds that sounds dirty. Yeah, uh, but Puma still kicks out of this. Yeah, and like, Cage Conan has come come yeah. down at this point. Conan making his return since the last time we saw him, he got busted open uh, with the title after Cage ripped it. Uh, he makes his way down. You know, he's trying to get Puma back into this, but Cage is just. Cage is this, at this point is just punching Puma in the face. Yeah, and I'm expecting okay, we're gonna get a disqualification because we know Cage has a temper. Right. But Conan ends up grabbing a towel and throwing it into the ring, causing a forfeit on Puma's part. So Cage is officially the number one contender for the Lucha Underground Championship, and I'm just thinking what like Puma could have taken a couple more shots to the face, and just got a disqualification and wouldn't have had to worry about Cage. Yeah. So Conan, even though he would say after the commercial break, hey, you may not believe me, but I did you a favor out there. Yeah. And now we need to execute our plan to precision. So does Conan have something up his sleeve? Yeah. We'll have to wait and it's, see. I don't know. I'm wondering if Conan's, like, going to turn on Puma. There's been a lot of speculation on that. Yeah. And like, I almost kind of expected it in this match. Yeah. But it didn't happen. So... I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting to see where this goes and what Conan's if he has ulterior uh, ulterior motives or if he's just if he knows what he's doing. Uh, then we get Sexy Sar talking to Daria Cueto. She wants to face the crew by herself. She doesn't want any partners, especially men. She wants to do it on her own. Daria Cueto says, "But Rick wants the crew also." So, you know, what if I give you Rick? And she goes, no, 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 I want to do it by myself. And he says, no, I mean as an opponent. Next week, Sexy Star will take on Big Rick. And the winner will be able to face the crew. And yeah. Dario says, if Sexy Star wins, that, she will, that he will make sure that no one comes out to save her. That she gets to do it all on her own. So I'm thinking, if Sexy Star wins, is she going to go in a three-on-one handicap match against the crew? I, it can't be that much worse than fighting Big Rick by herself. This is true. <laughs> like, that's going to be fucked up. Yeah. Like, I I don't know how this is going to play <laughs> out. This is going to be scary next week. Uh, then we get uh, the crossbreed of Bull Dempsey and Balls Mahoney. A man like named, the bad parts? Yeah. A man well, named Vinny Massaro. Uh, he is the unfortunate victim to Pentagon Junior this year. Yeah. Or this this, this year. year. This year. Uh, this is gonna week, have a messed up year. <laughs> it's a bad year. Uh, he ends up getting uh, beat with a pump handle pile driver. Yeah. That happens. Then he gets power bombed through a table. Then he gets his arm broken. Yeah. Because uh, Pentagon Junior is a dick, I guess. Well, Pentagon Junior, uh, before the match started, he told the announcer. Uh, she said, Pentagon Jr. wants me to let everyone know that he's dedicating this match to his master. Yeah. So, so his master's a dick. Yeah, his master's an asshole. It's like Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. Like, he's just a messed up dude. Um, then we had, uh, we've been seeing this, this feud building. Our main event would be Johnny Mundo taking on King Cuerno. Yeah. A lot of great action in this. This match was awesome. Until it ended with a double count out. But then it was still awesome. But then it was, yeah, and then they fucking brawl. Because, like, it was a double count-out, but they're like, we don't give a fuck. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, Matt Strager said, I don't think either of them heard the bell ring, and I don't think either of them cared. Yeah. And they just start beating the shit out of each other. They're going upstairs, throwing yeah, each other into walls. There was a couple times I thought they were going to fall off that balcony. Yeah, like, they, they each tried to throw each other off the fucking balcony. Yeah. And Cuerno was really close <laughs> a couple times. Yeah. Uh, but then they end up, like, like Cuerno dives into Mundo, and they goes crashing through this gate yeah. that has kind of a storage area behind it. And that's that's how we fade out from the match. So we know this is going to build towards something else. And I'm excited to see what they end up doing. We're starting to get that violence that Darth yeah. Cueto wanted. And it's looking good. Uh, but we finish Lucha Underground. Uh, the car that has Lotus in the trunk ends up parking. Uh, the... The trunk opens up, and a masked man says, what do you know about Lucha Libre? And pulls Lotus out of the trunk, yeah. and then we're done with Lucha Underground. So I I'm, I wish Kevin Hawk was here. I wonder if he knows. Because like, yeah. every wrestler has kind of that distinct mask, so I'm wondering right. if he knows who this is. Uh, we, you know, we might not know until next week when we see next week's episode of Lucha Underground. Yeah, I'm... Um... I don't think this is who it is. Okay. But his voice reminded me of Danny Trejo. But that's yeah. not helpful. You know what? Danny Trejo was at a few tapings of Lucha Underground, so... Maybe? It's Machete. Machete is coming to Lucha yeah. Underground. <laughs> anyway. He's trying to find a teacher. That's why he's like... Yeah. <laughs> I gotta learn how to wrestle. Uh, but yeah, an awesome episode of Lucha Underground of... Much better than last week's just bizarre yeah. episode. But let's finish off our midweek wrap up with NXT. Uh, 13 minutes. We're good. Yeah. NXT opening up with Hideo Itami versus Bull Dempsey. Yeah, this match was cool. Like, when Hideo come out, came out, I was like, all right, cool, a Hideo match. Who's he going to go against? Bull Dempsey? What the fuck? Yeah. Like, and it was, like, I was kind of scared for, for Hideo at it for a second. But then Hideo kicks the shit out of Bull Dempsey. Yeah. Like, Dempsey had some good offense, but Hideo was firmly in control for most of this match. Oh, Hideo did his, like, big strike combo that he does. Yeah. He, like, Hideo went into overdrive right yeah. again, and he just went, fuck you, and just started hitting him with all kinds of moves. Uh, hit, yeah, it was, it was a bad day for Bull Dempsey. <laughs> but then Hideo, after winning, he beats him with a running kick. Yeah. Makes his way up to the to the top of the ramp, and gets a supermodel kick out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, then I loved the the attempt at the, the selfie stick. He was yeah. trying to get the best view of him and Hideo, and then he's like, "Oh no, I just want me." And then as he does that, he goes, "Oh shit, Hideo's back up." And <laughs> and then Hideo ends up fucking running after Tyler Breeze, throws him into the into the into the ring and it's just fucking yeah. chaos at this point so I think uh, Tyler Breeze is uh, rethinking uh, his attempt at facing Hideo Itami yeah uh, then we get we get the the graphic that we're getting a one on one rematch Charlotte is getting her rematch against Sasha next week yeah, that's so be it'll be awesome. interesting to see uh, the roles switch now we yeah. have Sasha defending the title in a one on one match against Charlotte uh, and Charlotte later in the show would say the title is coming back to her because yeah. Sasha has never beaten her one on one. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how that match goes. We get a look uh, at the Brian Kendrick who's returning Fuck in yeah. tonight's main event against Finn Balor. Fuck yeah! I'm excited to see him back. I appreciate him more than I ever have. I just I like Brian Kendrick. He's he's liked him since he was, since he was. I loved him when he was spanky. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I've. The fact that he was like the bell, like the the singing bell yeah. for the Undertaker, it was oh, just ridiculous. I, <laughs> I don't know. I I'm excited to see more of the Brian Kendrick. I hope he gets promo time. I do too. He is great. I agree. Paul London, please bury the hatchet with WWE. Join I don't your think friend. He I he hope. has so much beef with WWE. I know. I don't think that's but I just we can hope. It would be awesome to get London and Kendrick in if, oh. NXT. Them against the Lucha Dragons. Yeah. Speaking of the Lucha Dragons, uh, we'd first start off with uh, Ty Dillinger. Or no, Lucha Dragons would come out first, yeah. I believe. And then Ty uh, Dillinger and Jason Jordan actually got an entrance. Yes. 
But it was cut off by like a pro version. Yes, uh, we, we get a break in from Solomon Crow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, saying that last week was an introduction, a statement, because I'm on a mission. And that won't stop until I'm NXT champion. Yeah. You have been warned. No, the fact that they got an entrance and then it was cut off made me laugh almost as much as when fucking Darren Young and his partner were announced to go against the Ascension. Yeah. Darren Young and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because I was just like, oh, Lucha Dragons, who are they going to face? Probably the Vaude Villains, maybe Enzo and Cass. And then Ty Dillinger and Jason Jordan. They, they get an entrance? Oh, no, no, they don't. They do get an entrance, they, specifically they, so we can have Solomon Crow yeah. break in. We uh, need to give Solomon Crow some time, but we, we've already got the matches planned out. What? Let's give Dillinger and Jordan an entrance tonight. Just have them. <laughs> like, you, you, got, you guys get your entrance. Go 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 for it. Quick. Uh, get Solomon Crow on the yeah. screen. Um, I love that they're doing... They're still doing the hacker gimmick. Yeah. I love that. that that's what I was super excited for. And yeah. I'm glad that they're still going with that idea because it's it's new it's it's something different and I'm excited to see what else he's able to do with that particular gimmick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we'd have Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger taking on the Lucha Dragons. Yeah, I was pretty excited for this. I've always liked Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger. Yeah. Uh, too bad they didn't last very long. No. Um, because Ty Dillinger would start to get cocky and actually tell Jason Jordan to relax. Uh, yeah. he, he kept trying to take the Lucha Dragons on all by himself, and he, you know, there was two times, two perfectly good times that he could have tagged Jason yeah. Jordan in, and the third time when he was absolutely in trouble, he went to tag Jason Jordan, and Jordan was like, fuck you, dude, yeah. walked away, uh, Ty Dillinger gets hit with uh, the Selena Del Sol and, and the Centon, yep. Lucha Dragons win, uh... We'd go to a commercial, and we'd come back, and Dillinger's like, you know what, I'm not going anywhere until Jason Jordan gets back out here and tells me tells me why he left me yeah. high and dry. You know, I don't care if I'm ruining someone's match. You know, send that person out. I'll whoop them, too. And then he'd get his ass kicked by Baron Corbin. Yeah. Ty Dillinger, you, we're only two months into the year, and you've already won retard of the year. Yep. Dude. <laughs> uh, it was not a good day for Ty Dillinger. Uh, we know we also had, we had a, a quick backstage with Finn Balor that didn't really mean anything. No, it was it mostly was, just like, "Hey, it was like, what? What do you feel about Kevin Owens?" Yeah, and he was he was like, "I'll deal with Kevin Owens when I when that when that comes." But tonight I have to face the former tag team champion. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. Um, uh, then we get uh, we get Tyler Breeze, I think. Yeah. I don't know if that was oh, next. Oh, uh, one, one, one thing that I... Something that happened later, but going with the Ty, yeah. Ty Dillinger. Uh, Jason Jordan would actually be interviewed later saying uh, he did what he did, and he'll give an explanation when he wants. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Then, then we have Tyler Breeze uh, telling Hideo Itami that... You know, you want to try and take my spotlight? Well, I'm going to crush you like the cockroach that you are. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know if that's racist in any way. It might be. I don't know. Uh, we get a little package about uh, Sami Zayn and uh, on the trip to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Uh, really kind of building up the fact that you know you got to do something good, even though the issues with Kevin Owens. Uh, so we should be seeing uh, Sami Zayn coming back in the next couple of weeks. I hope so. We had Becky Lynch taking on Bailey. These two ladies, I am so excited yeah. to see more of these two. Uh, Becky has really gotten her flow going. Bailey is more fired up than she's ever been. Yep. A lot of great back and forth action out of this. Uh, but Becky would get the get the victory with the submission that started as like an arm. Yeah, like it was like kind of like a, a shoulder wrench. Yeah, and, and then when Bailey fought out of it, she like got up to her knees and then started wrenching again. Yeah. Oh man, that made my shoulder hurt just watching it. Yeah. Um. No, I really like when a wrestler can use like a really basic move, but make it look just vicious enough to finish a match. Yeah, it's and that's how this match went. Yeah, it w and it was you know it. 
there wasn't wasn't any slow spots. Both these ladies, uh, I Bailey did try to go for her sliding drop kick yeah, through the ropes. That slowed down Why a little bit. Out, but she still she pulled it off, but it wasn't quite as fluid yeah. as it was the first time she did it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I cannot. I don't know. We're gonna be getting into the whole divas thing. Yeah. Uh, but these two ladies deserve so many more accolades than a lot of the girls on the main roster. Yeah. Might, uh, might even say they deserve a chance. Hashtag give the divas a chance. We'll talk about them a little bit. Uh, we had a little backstage uh, interview with Rhino. Uh, Rhino yeah. saying, you know, the, uh, she she asked him, you know, what what made you what made you come back to NXT? And he says it was everywhere I went. All I heard about was NXT, NXT this, NXT that. And I saw the fire and the passion that these people had. And then I looked at myself and I realized that's the same fire and the same passion that I have. And I've come back to break everyone in half. With a gore. Gore. Yeah. Gore. So, I think it's so fucking cool that Rhino's yeah. back. <laughs> I'm happy that we're going to get to see more matches from Rhino. I wasn't sure if it was just going to be like the one match. Yeah. No, I'm... Or what his role was going to be. But yeah, if he's in for more matches, then fuck yeah. I am all for more Rhino matches. Rhino versus Kevin Owens. Let's do it. Yes. Speaking of Kevin Owens, he'd be at commentary for our... Main event, which is Finn Balor taking on the Brian Kendrick, our second return in two weeks after NXT yeah. rival. NXT just keeps getting better. We're having all these cool people fucking yep. come back. Uh, so the match between Kendrick and Balor was phenomenal. A lot of really good action. But the main focus for the first part was that Owens and Alex Riley were getting into it on commentary. Yeah. Uh, Riley very vocal about uh, the things that he did to Sammy uh, upon his debut, yep. and then how he won the title. And uh, Alex, you know, the one thing that really put it over was Alex was like, you know, you call yourself you, you call yourself a champion, and Owens goes, yeah, I do call myself a champion, which is something you can't do because you yep. never were a champion. And he says, you know, you're right. I I never was a champion, but I also wouldn't. I he says, like, but I'm a man, and as a man, I want to do that to my best friend. Yeah. And then Kevin Owens got really quiet. Yeah, and, Evan, yeah. and, then, and then, like, the, the camera kept going over to the commentators. Yeah. And Owens is just just scaring a hole in Alex Riley. Yeah. And Riley, Riley's, like, looking at his monitor, he's like, I'm not, I'm not going to pay attention to this. And Owens is like, you know what? Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think I'm done out here. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Yep. And I think it's Corey Graves goes, Good job, Alex. You just made the champion mad. <laughs> so oh. Kevin Owens walks away. Then we get the rest of this really great match. Kendrick looks just as good as he ever has. Yeah. Uh, Balor's on top of his game. A lot of really good action here. We get the, the combination move, Sling Blade into the Coup de Gras, yep. giving Finn Balor the win. Uh, while he's celebrating the win, Kevin Owens makes his way back down. Makes his way back out. They kind of have a little stare down from the ring to the to the uh, the ring or the, to the, the ring the, to the ring. the ring to the ring the ring to the ramp. Uh, but then Kevin Owens makes his way back over to the commentary table and fucking hauls off and hucks oh. Alex Riley over the commentator's table. Uh, I wish Kevin Hawk was here. I want to hear his opinion on this so bad. I know because. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we need to give him a segment next week just to talk about this. You know, yeah, just a little. Dur during next week's NXT uh, review, we'll uh, we'll give Kev we'll give Kevin Hawk a chance to uh, talk about how much pleasure he took in watching Kevin Owens beat the shit out of Alex Riley, uh, both sexual and otherwise. That's that's on that pay per view we kept talking about. We're just. Uh, so yeah, now, you know, we've, we're getting, we're getting closer to that inevitable clash between Finn yeah. and Owens. Now we have Owens taking his aggression out on Riley. Is this going to bring Riley in for a match to take on Owens? There's, there's a lot of things that could be interesting. Yeah. Let's hope, let's hope Riley's learned a couple things. Uh, let's hope he learned how to jump. <laughs> uh, 
I, I don't I don't foresee it going very well for him. Yeah. But uh, that was NXT, and that is the end of this week's midweek wrap up. Uh, be sure to check over in the playlist where we've got our fast lane review, our raw review. We're gonna be having uh, a WWE news segment where we talk about a few things that have. Uh, transpired over the week. Yep. We also have our SmackDown rundown, and we have Thomas's top five, the top five of February 2015. Yeah, so be sure to look for fun. all those. Information down in the description. Like, favorite, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and we will see you at whatever video you decide to pick next.